You may have noticed it before in some of my other videos, but under my workbench sits this lavatory oven. Now the lavatory oven I originally bought so I could do powder coating, but I've also found it useful to bake on linseed oil as a good coating to prevent rust. And the oven works really well. I bought it on a online government auction site, govdeals.com. I didn't pay a lot of money for it and it's been pretty good. However, in the last video, what I didn't share in that video was it had problems with the thermostat. Sometimes the thermostat would call for heat, but it wouldn't turn on the coils. So my guess is the thermostat is going bad and I think I have a nice little cheap solution that we can get it going again and fix this little oven. Now, normally things don't work out in my favor like this, but I actually bought what you see here on the table about a month ago. After I bought the oven, the one thing that I really never cared for is the analog dial. Sometimes it's really hard to dial in the right temperature. Now, I kind of have things memorized in my head, and I know about where to put the dial to get 400 degrees, but I thought a digital display might make that a little bit easier. So I bought this PID controller on Amazon. It was relatively inexpensive, and I will put a link down below. But what it came with was the temperature control controller here. It came with this heat sink and the solid state relay that you mount onto the heat sink. It's a 25 amp relay and we'll put some heat sink compound between the relay and the heat sink itself. And then it came with a temperature probe, a K-sensor style. Uh, and I don't remember what the top end of the heat was on this, but it was well above the 400 degrees Fahrenheit that I'm going to try to get out of this oven. I think the oven is capable of 220 degrees Celsius and that's probably what we'll set our ceiling to on the PID controller. But you can also make this PID controller uh, show Fahrenheit, which I'm kind of excited about because I'm still a little old school. Now, I'm not going to lie. This oven is a beast. It weighs a tremendous amount, and I think it's just because it's a lot of steel. I think it's very well built, uh, but it is heavy. Putting it on a lift and jacking it up in the air a little bit is going to help me work on it. I did take the door off. It also weighs a lot. I also took the rack off in the center, but what we have is kind of a dirty looking oven that we're going to roll on its back and dismantle and find out how this thing works. Boy, I tell you, I always love it when you take a whole bunch of screws off of something, trying to get it apart, and then you realize that uh, it wasn't really necessary. I took all the screws out all the way around the sides and on the top, thinking this whole bottom would come off. And uh, yeah, no, really I needed this screw here and this screw here, and it just flipped up. But yeah, you live and learn. Uh, looking at the bottom of it, it's not very complicated. It looks like we have kind of a power distribution block over here. We have the power switch itself right here and the control board. The, the temperature sensor is right here. And my guess is, actually I know it is, these are feeding the coils that are in the bottom of the oven. So there's not much to it. It's a pretty simple uh, deal. I'm gonna guess that probably the relay is bad. There is a relay right here and it probably controls the uh, on off of the coils themselves. And it was calling for heat but I wasn't getting heat. And after playing with the thermostat a little bit, I could get it to heat back up. So the relay probably just needs replaced, but we're gonna put a PID controller in it anyhow, because well, we have one. Now, one thing worth mentioning is I do see a yellow and a red wire coming off this temperature sensor. So that does mean it is probably a K type sensor. And that's perfect because my PID controller uses a K type sensor. So I'm going to try to use the same temperature sensor and not use the new one unless I have to. So I've pulled the circuit board out, as you can see, and it's actually gonna set us up in a really nice position. Basically, we can still use the power switch. We'll get our, our feed from our mains here. Power switch is gonna stay right where it's at. Uh, the only thing we gotta do is cut a square hole for the PID to fit, and maybe we'll do a little cleanup work on the face because you can see it is designed for a round dial. Now the board itself was probably a high dollar board at one time. You can take a look at it and the quality of it is, is really nice. Uh, I have no idea how old this oven is, uh, but this was probably a state of the art board. Um, I'm gonna pull the heat sink off and keep it because well, that's what I do. And uh, I might pull a few other things off of here and keep it because I really like these square LEDs. As odd as that sounds, maybe we'll pull the uh, pot off too uh, and uh, add those to my arsenal of electronics. Now at this point, I've taken the PID controller and I'm just gonna lay it right on top of where that dial was, take a Sharpie and mark a square. And then I'll take a Dremel and cut that square open. Then the PID controller should slide down inside. Now I've never really been a big fan of rotary tools, but when you have something really small like this that you wanna cut out, I think that's where they shine. Now this is just an inexpensive knockoff rotary tool. It's actually a tack life, but man, it made quick work for this little job. Now remember, you wanna make it look pretty. 
Now with it all wired up, it should be ready to go. I did mount the solid state um, relay and it's heat sink down here in the corner. There's a vent here. I know the way these ovens work. They have these vents in the center and um, they're designed to kind of pull cool air in from the bottom and up through the whole oven, which helps distribute heat a little better. Um, so there should be some airflow down here. Not that I think it's gonna matter. That's a pretty beefy relay. And I don't think these heating coils, if I remember right, I think they're only like 900 watts. So they're not a whole lot. All the wiring, I just used 14 gauge because well, that's what it came with. So any new wiring I use 14 gauge. And um, I didn't have the ring for the PID controller. So I just used some uh, hot glue. This doesn't get hot, it actually stays very cool. The whole bottom of the oven and the outside stays really cool. It's a decent, decently insulated box. So now we just need to reassemble everything, turn it on and see how it works. So I have the oven all back together and I've had it on for a while now and it is almost up to temperature. As you can see on the display, the bottom number is the set point and it's at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the top number is uh, the current temperature inside the oven. So it's climbing slowly. It is a PID, so it's going to kind of flash that um, uh, relay on and off until it gets you know to the right temperature and it'll hold it at 400 degrees, which is gonna be perfect for powder coat painting, which was one of the reasons that I bought this oven. If you like these types of videos, please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos. At the very least, you might be entertained.